Word has it on the street, Maxie, that you're seeing a lot of Annie. Yeah, we have been. It, it's awful. Awful? Yes. Uh, I, I think I'm in love. I think it appears originally in Freud's wit and the, its relation to the unconscious. And it goes like this. Well, I'm paraphrasing. I never want to belong to any club that would have someone like me for a member. How's it going? Rob told me he's a neurotic. So you see an analyst? Yes, but just for the last 40 years. 40? Really? Yeah, well, uh, I'll give him one more year, and then I'll see how I feel. But strangely, I feel so relaxed around him. Okay, all right. Incredible. Ron Wallman, where have you been? <laughs> So good to be back on Filmax Radio. Well, Filmax TV now. Yeah, yeah. well, I was, well, that came, you know, and that came about just because uh, I started doing these Zoom things and I realized, why not put up the videos as well? And then, and then I thought, well, let's just kind of call it something else, you know, and, and then also bringing on people like who we're about to have on Matt and, and, <clears throat> and Ellie. And I thought, you know, it's nice to help people from, you know, all over the, the art spectrum, but film, of course, being mostly what I'm doing. But, uh, you know, uh, helping put these things on people's radar. They made a very interesting project about, you know, cast kind of remaking Annie Hall, one of the most popular beloved films, uh, in, you know, to a, uh, uh, by casting seniors, right? right? Uh, and they're going to tell us, we're going to find out all about what, what went into that. But how did you, you asked me, about the, uh, doing this, and I had been aware of these guys, but how did you become aware of them and their film? Well, Adam, you know I am the number one Woody Allen fan, right? And I still I stay do. by my man, and I love him. So any time that I hear anything that's got to do with you know Woody Allen, and particularly Annie Hall, because that's probably my most viewed movie and probably my number one favorite film. So... I went into a you mean you mean even outside of Woody Allen, you're saying just in of all films that you've seen, you'd put Annie Hall at the very top. Annie Hall is right up there in the top five. Okay. Yeah. Um so yeah, perfect film. Yeah, I thought so. And I've seen it so often. And I and I went into a little bookshop in the Lower East Side recently, all masked up and everything. And it's this bookshop that opened during the pandemic. Uh huh by a lovely uh, uh, lady named Lee and we got talking in the bookshop and Matt, who we're going to talk to in a minute, was in the bookshop assisting her um, and so I met him and then I don't know how, I, I guess through the wonders of the internet and, and, and being on Instagram, I found out that Matt had directed this film called My Annie Hall, which absolutely pricks up my ears. So I reached out to him and said, what is this My Annie Hall? I have to see it. Watch it a couple of times. It's delightful. And I think it's such an interesting idea to, to reshoot a movie with seniors. I mean, I think that that idea is just tremendous. I haven't seen that done before. Um, Especially because, because it's a love story. story you know? You know? Exactly, exactly. And uh, an echo. I'm getting an echo. Did something change in our audio? Nothing changed on my side. Okay, I think I'm okay. Well, um, so yeah, because you don't you don't see seniors. I mean, even today there is more of it, but you don't see seniors uh, doing like a, the idea of doing a romantic comedy. It's refreshing and such iconic movie and such iconic characters. And I want I was so curious about how they'd handle it, and they did it with such respect. Uh, to Woody Allen and to the seniors themselves and to the characters that I thought, Adam, we need to talk to these kids. Uh, well, I'm glad you did because I, I got approached by them a couple of years ago when they were just releasing it. And, you know, um, like what, and I was, we were emailing back and forth and they, they we were starting to, I think, even try to schedule something. Again, it was for the podcast, but 
Um, and, you know, things just sometimes, once in a while, things just get busy or there's conflicts or who knows. But it's one of those things that unfortunately never happened. So this is kismet. This is like great that you were, I'm, you I'm, all, it's all I need. It was perfect timing. And I'm glad to finally have Matt and Ellie on the show because I, I felt bad that that no, didn't. I just think. I definitely want more people to see this film because, you know, right now New York's sad at the moment. It's going through a very rough time. And and Annie Hall was such a New York film. Uh, and it just, it, it you know, and as, as they say, it's a movie about memories. You think it's flashbacks to scenes in a relationship. And this was sort of flashbacks to, for me, when I watched it to New York, the New York we love so much. So it's, it's such a good film to see right now. You know, it's just, it's such a feel good film. And I, I thought, God, we got to talk to you and get more people seeing this film because it's delightful. Do people need to see Annie Hall before they see my Annie Hall? Mm, I think they do. I think they do actually. That's yeah, yeah. probably it. They'll appreciate the context and the, the, what it, the work that went into ma making this version. Well, everybody know? has to see Annie Hall. I mean, it's a, it should be, you know, anyone, 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 all, all people who've ever fallen in love or are going to be in a relationship. Everyone is, but then this film right now in these times is a lovely, lovely nod, a uh, memory of all of that, New York and love and romance and just so great to see elderly people, um, what they, what's about them and great sense of humor. And so these guys, they did a great gig. This is a good gig they did. They, it's a great, good thing they gave the world. Uh, well, we showed a, uh, showed a little bit of, of just a few seconds of it coming into our, you know, at the very beginning, and we'll show a little bit more of my Annie Hall, and then we'll we'll welcome the the kids. <laughs> well, you know, I'm so old now, and I'm like a really old Jew. So anyone under the age of thirty is kids for me. Uh, you know, yeah, we both have young young children ish. I have twenty something children, so those are literally the twins. And I think these wow. this two are in their twenties too. Oh my God! Is are they that young? Well, we'll see in a minute. I think so. Um, well, thank you for booking. Let's let's look at another little piece of the film, and then we'll we'll introduce the guys. Great. The incredible thing about it is, uh, I'm paying for her analysis, and I'm getting screwed. Hello, hello. we will be watching this. Hi, Ellie Sachs. We just. <laughs> talk each other up so we're happy, so we feel good and bright and optimistic about life. I love it. <laughs> yeah, otherwise we're, the, the, let alone to our own devices, we'll be slitting our own wrists in a, in a matter of minutes. Totally. We're talking about the, how, uh, how bleak everything has looked, but things are looking brighter. It's a nice sunny day more. in New York City. That's so right. That's good. That's right, it's a nice well, day. And it's, I'm so happy Ron's to be here. Ron, Ron is on an island off the coast of an island off the coast of an island off of America. Right? Which is? Ron, you said you're on Shelter Island? It's a very it's glamorous of Long island. island. What's that? Very glamorous Shelter Island. They don't even have a private jet uh, runway here. Got it. Well known. And Ellie, you're on the, are you in the city? I'm in Brooklyn. And now we have oh, Matt. in Brooklyn? He comes on with music. He has his own theme song? What's going on? Yes, Matt always has an entrance song. That's one of his. <laughs> I just always have music it's on. It's a good idea. Right. What's that? Is my video not working? Hold on. I could, I could, here, I could have an entrance song. Hold on, let me. All right. <laughs> I think it's the. Uh, Hold on, guys. Sorry. The music of Desi or something. And Matt's got something some like. Yeah. Thank God. Good yeah. <laughs> When None I turned 30, that was my biggest neurosis. I thought I was losing it. I like couldn't focus on anything else for a full year, and it's still here. Still got it. Where are you, Matt? I'm on the I'm on the Upper West Side with Ronald. Oh, good. Here, let me. Okay, turn. so we're we're all in very in very different spots at the moment. Wait, Adam, where are you? Are you in the city still? No, no, I'm in the I'm north of the city, uh, in an undisclosed. <laughs> in an undisclosed bunker. I, I can just. I can disclose it. Yeah, the, my bunker is. Uh, I, I'm in. Uh, I'm in the Hudson Valley. Actually, I'm up okay. near. Uh, pretty close to like Bard College, that area. Nice. 
Ryan Ryan Beck is nearby. Hudson is nearby. Um, you know, so until I came across the two of you, I thought I was the biggest Woody Allen fan. <laughs> And then I came across my Annie Hall and I thought, oh my God, these guys must be a bigger fan than me to make a movie like this. Because I know what goes into making a movie and the time it takes and the budget and the, all of that. Well, oh. yeah, I mean, it's a funny story. I mean, the way that we landed on Annie Hall was kind of just by chance. We were working with a senior home on the Upper East Side to recreate a classic film. We gave them a list of 10 movies and Annie Hall and Singing in the Rain were tied for first place. And, and well, tell, her, tell them about the second second place. Second place was Rashomon. I was kind of pulling for Rashomon. That was a hope of mine. <laughs> it's just a film that I love and I could have totally seen it in Central Park, you know, right. but- Right, we um, could have, yeah, you, you, we could, uh, yeah, they could have done a Rashomon, but everybody had their own version of that exactly. story about choose, not choosing Rashomon. Exactly. Right. Shula, the woman who played Annie Hall, was also really pushing for Rashomon in Japanese, but for obvious reasons, we could not do that. So, so Shula and I were part of a coalition that was really pulling for Rashomon, but, you know, we landed on Singing in the Rain at Annie Hall, and Matt and I decided, I mean, we had a very serious conversation where we looked at each other, and we were like, can we really create rain? Like, can we figure out how to really <laughs> recreate the rain and make all of this happen? And we were like, this is probably going to be really tough. We're on the Upper East Side. We're with, we're telling a story about a group of people who kind of slot right into the film. So it just, Annie Hall made sense. Well, wait, just let's go back a little bit. What were you doing at this old age home? What, why were you there? So, so we'll give you, hold on. Yeah, let's, we, we jumped ahead. Hold on. So, so years ago, I was visiting my grandmother in Cincinnati. I took her out to lunch and she kept asking me the same question over and over again, how school? At this point, I'd been out of school for years and she had early onset Alzheimer's and I realized our relationship moving forward was not gonna be the same relationship we had growing up. And I knew that music, I knew with people with Alzheimer's and dementia that music was super important to tapping into past memories. So when we got back home, Casablanca was on TV and that was one of her favorite films. We started watching it and almost immediately she started reciting some of the lines of one of the characters. So I just jumped in and started playing the character opposite her and I realized through film, we could still maintain that meaningful relationship. So, you know, I was an artist and I thought this was an interesting idea. So when I came back to New York City, I knew I wanted to take this idea and do it on a larger scale to remake a classic film starring older people, not necessarily with dementia or Alzheimer's, but I thought the idea of recreation um, was interesting. The problem was I had no idea how to do it. Even though for me, film was always the goal. I was doing art for eight years at the time. I heard about this girl who was doing the directing theater and improv in prisons and other fringe communities. And I got connected to her and I said, listen, I got this crazy idea. I want to remake a classic film starring older people, but I have no idea how to do it. Right, so that, that girl was Ellie Sachs? That, that girl was Ellie. Yeah, wow. and, and she was like, well, I do. Wow, that's a great story. Yeah. yeah. And, and then yeah. that's why we ended up, that's how we ended up, and I, I'll let Ellie kind of take it from here, but that's how we ended up on the Upper East Side and with this older community. Yeah, well, so this was like the first thing Matt and I did together, and we've been pretty inseparable like art-wise since, but this project started like a, a really big thing for us. And, you know, when Matt came to me with the idea, I was like, I love it, this is so great. And it kind of reminded me of the work I was doing in prisons, but different, you know, just like telling a story with a group of people who don't often have their voice heard um, in the mainstream. So what was really interesting is we took this idea and I thought it was like an ironclad pitch. I was like, who would say no to this, right? Like, this is so much fun. We took this idea to over, I think 20 senior citizen centers and homes in New York City. Every single one said no, except for one. So why, what were they afraid of? Or was it? The, the sort of, you know, rhetoric was just kind of like, oh, our people are too frail, they're too old, they can't handle this kind of thing. Yeah, and also the Ellie and I coming in, we're not social workers. So like, who are these Weird artists. Kids? Like, yeah. yeah. So all this red tape about, if you want to work with seniors and come into a center, I mean, now COVID, it's like impossible, but pre-COVID, it's all, it was already super difficult if you didn't have an MSW. And so anyway, long story short, I mean, we'll get into more of it, but we kind of learned this amazing thing where it's like, it's pretty obvious, but it's like, if you tell a group of people that they're too frail or they're too old or they can't handle it, they will believe that. 
But if you create an environment of like, okay, like learn your lines, see you at your call time, 7 a.m., you got this. People want to rise to the occasion. They want a reason to just like get up and do it. And so we were this like absolute in the truest sense, like a motley crew <laughs> coming together to pull this thing off. And it was right. you know, magical. It was a really, really well, wait, summer. Waking up at 7 a.m. for a senior doesn't seem to be that big a challenge, but memorizing dialogue that might that wasn't, be that a little was, bit more of a challenge. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, there were a lot of challenges. The 6 a.m., 7 a.m. call times, not so much, but trying to coordinate with people who only turn their cell phones on on the weekends, that's hard. Trying to wrangle a group of people who some don't even have cell phones, that's difficult. And again, something we didn't really expect. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Very flexible shoot days where if people were tired and didn't want to keep working, you'd say, okay, see you tomorrow. Or was it like very strictly run? Like a we were, I mean, we were strict. I mean, I think that like from, you know, rules and from confines comes true creativity. And like, we really ran it like any regular set. And the thing was like, obviously if someone like needed a break, they'd get a break, but people didn't want to take breaks. They were just like ready to keep going. Yeah. So any of that you cast were they originally actors not really harry our main star who played alvy singer the woody allen character designer harry studied with so harry was a was a, an emmy award-winning set designer for guiding light and captain kangaroo and he actually studied with stella adler but he was just harry wow. just kind of yeah harry lived i mean we can get into that super color he was 94 and, yes. yeah he was 94 at the time 96 um and uh yeah harry studied he did some later in life, some productions at Hunter College, but never, for whatever reason, just never kind of pushed himself to be in front of the camera until. And did did you, you hold, right, it's. Did you hold auditions or did you just. Oh, um, yeah. So my, my background's theater. Like I went to theater. Well, let's see those. We got to see those tapes, by the way, the audition <laughs> tapes. <laughs> that that would be. We have them. On the hard drive somewhere. But yeah, we, I mean, just like from the get-go, we ran this like like we would any other art project. The stakes were super high and it was very professional and like they were regular auditions and there was certainly some drama around casting. Um, that was that was a point of contention. For people. The more the professional the production, though, the more confidence your actors will have in you, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah, they were confused at first. They were like, are you guys college students? No, we're not. <laughs> Are you guys, do you guys work here? Not really. Well, why, why are you guys here? They didn't get it at first. Cause again, you don't have, there's, it's not, there's not a lot of this like, like artists. I mean, you, you know, you have the kind of standard like painting and whatnot, but there's not a whole lot of like filmmakers coming into these senior communities and saying like, we're going to make a real film. So it took them a while to be like, oh, like this is legit. And then we had lines out the door. So eventually we had to start turning people back. Well, there was definitely, right. There was definitely an, uh, an appetite for uh, being engaged in something, something important, like, you know, that would utilize their, cause as you said, it was like, uh, it sounded like a lot of these places, uh, maybe their intentions were out of concern but that they, act, in fact, had an opposite effect in that they were short shifting. That's not the right expression, but they, they, right? They were short sort of- uh, people in their community. changing, right, their own, yeah. Totally. So. Okay, so wait, you got the, the idea for this movie from them. You did like a, what are your top 10 favorite movies? And that came from them. Yeah, so we were, yeah. you know, we had, you know, we couldn't just choose that, like, it wasn't just like a free for all, what do you guys want to make? But, you know, we, we were thinking about stories that would relate to them and that they could see themselves in. Um, so we, yeah, and then we just, we wanted it to be classic, something that they grew up with or something that was, um, that they could look back on. Cause we wanted to really tap into memory and use memory to help tell this story and, and make it an important mm. kind of I'm a component of the making of the film as well. Well, cool. but what was your relationship to Woody Allen or Annie Hall specifically? Well, you know, I think as two young Jews growing up, um, you know, you, you see your, you, we, you know, subconsciously, like you see yourself on screen. So I think growing up, at least I'll speak for myself, like you see this kind of like nebbish kind of neurotic Jew who complained like that, you know, I think a lot of young Jews could relate to that. Uh, that was like, yeah. that's what I saw myself as. Um, yeah, and it's also such a quintessential romantic comedy. And I think that one of the things like, you know, 
one of the things I love about the film is that it's a memory movie, right? That it's told out of order, yeah. that you're kind of picking the very best of each thing. And it's such an interesting film too for this community because memory is non-linear, right? We, we remember certain things. We remember like snapshots of moments. Right. And you're an older person and you're looking back on your life. It's not like you remember, well, I was born on this day in 1937. It's like, no, you're remembering snippets of things a lot like a film. So it's a really, I think in, in its sense, in, a, in its sense of form, it's a really beautiful film to kind of think back on one's legacy, one's life and memory and how those things all play with each other. Right. And, and just how, oh, sorry, Ronald, what were you saying? Oh no, I mean, it works so well and it makes so much sense to me as you talk about it like that. And it's also, I'll say in terms of love stories, um, it's a complicated love story. And, and most people's relationships to relationships and love, it's normally complicated. It's not a perfect, perfect linear, like you meet, you fall in love and it's not your kind of like perfect entanglement, but it is this complicated story that doesn't work out, but at the same time, it does work out by not working out. So I thought, you know, working with older people who've gone through multiple um, loves, I thought we both thought that this would be a really appropriate film. But then you sat down and you wrote a script specifically for this film. So you saw, decided I'll take these scenes and then I'll add these scenes. So how was that process? Like, how did you decide what to not include, what to include, how long it would be? Like, how was that? How did that work out? That's a great question. Right. For most most people don't made or watching or listening, maybe they don't aren't aware. It's a short, you, you adapted Annie Hall, which is, of course, a 90 plus minute film into uh, a short which is like 30 minutes. Right. So it's about, yeah, it's about 30 minutes. Well, I, f first off, we couldn't afford to go to LA. So we had to kill the LA scenes right off the bat. Right. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and I think it, the, the, first, the first thing we did was we really thought like, what can be excised from this that doesn't speak particularly to the people that we're making this film with? So like grandparents, scenes and characters that were, where there were like major age differentials, we got rid of very quickly. Right. And we really just honed in on the relationship. And I think, you know, for me and Matt, this was like such a fun process because I think like in theater, a lot of the time, like the way you learn to like put on a play is like you put on classics, right? And so you're, you're like taking a Shakespeare play, re recontextualizing it and like doing it with your friends, finding new things within the text. What was so great about me and Matt working on the script is like we were kind of in a way painting by numbers. Like we had this incredible script and we were really taking and learning from it, thinking about the people that we were working with. How could we tweak the scenes to really fit with their personalities? And then once we had a kind of rough pared down draft, about 40 pages, we would bring that into the rehearsal process with our seniors and um, they would do a lot of improv. And so we would really pull from them and then put that back into the script. So by the time we were ready to shoot, it was this incredible uh, sort of like hodgepodge of everything it was like really like the best of everything and, and we felt like super confident when it was time to shoot i just think it's so brave because you're working with material that's he's a legend he's a comedy legend and you're working with that material but then you also want to introduce some of your own sort of material um and so i feel like that's scary to me like how am i gonna get there like how's it gonna live together with his stuff and i what I felt, because I'm re I've am i seen Annie Hall probably more times than I've seen any other movie. Mm -hmm. And I think you really, really achieved that. And so that scene with Alison Porchnick eating the, the, the meat stew is just hilarious. I mean, that's just so great. The timing, the scene, the shoot, it was fabulous. Oh, so, thank you. I mean, you did an incredible job with, the, with like the material you brought to the film. I, I will say, you know, it, it speaks to spending time, like spending, you know, we only met with the seniors every Sunday. So we, but we spent, I guess, two months, um, two hours every Sunday getting to really know the seniors, you know, learning their inflection points, learn, I mean, learning about, and just learning their personal histories. Or even just so, like them coming into our, our workshop, our class, and it's like someone had brought like a huge Dunkin' Donuts iced coffee and some like donuts. And it's like, how are they eating it? How are they talking to us while they're eating it? How does that end up in the script? You know, just like their, their personalities are so rich. I think, you know, I've born and raised New Yorker. People say it's like, okay, it's a concrete jungle. Like I've always thought it's such a sort of like lame thing. But to be in your 70s, 80s, or 90s and like getting on the Madison Avenue bus, running errands, it is no small feat. 
to be an elderly person in New York City. Right. That community well, where you can concrete jungle. And so these people who were in our movie, like these are warriors. These are fascinating, amazing people who have such stories to tell. Mm. Pandemic aside though, I have heard that New York City is a good place for seniors. Like it's, it goes against what most people may, yeah. their basic assumptions about seniors that, you know, they should be in a quiet place and, you know, the countryside where it's, there's no chance, there's no traffic, there's no, you know, uh, opportunities for that. But it turns out actually that in New York City, because it offers so much, uh, you know, and it's easy to get around because, you know, you can walk to the store or you, you don't mm -hmm. have to rely on the vehicles and people can get to you and et cetera, that it's actually, a, and there's arts and things of that nature. So there's actually, it's stimulating for seniors and stimulation is important. Totally, totally. Yeah, so Harry and Shula, I mean, until we learned their schedule, they were all over the place. They were really difficult to track down. Harry was taking, when we first met him, two tap da dancing classes, at Hunter, French at Hunter, drama at Hunter, and he was in another show at the senior home. Um, yeah, the, <laughs> super active lifestyles, like something we, it totally challenged our kind of expectations and beliefs of what we thought aging was gonna be like. Cause again, the only older people we really knew were our grandparents and parents. We didn't have these intimate relationships with 80 and 90 year olds. And it totally changed what we thought being old could be so let me ask you so you've got the idea you've got your cost you've got your script you now have to then go and raise money like anyone would to make a short film so mm. doing that did you ever come across people go woody allen i don't want to touch that like that's yes a little bit but we really made it we really made once we realized how much we were putting the seniors into the film and their stories and they took ownership over this story we really made and it, the, the bigger story is not about woody and it, it's really about the seniors and them wanting to make this film and us wanting to help create the experience of doing that and i think you know we would post on social media we post behind the scenes and I think people really felt that and people became very connected, especially to Harry and Harry's journey and story. So interesting that you did this. Um, and then, so how many shoot days did you have? Like, what, what did that look like? What does the shoot look like? We uh, had, I think we had probably like 15 shoot days, something like that, Matt. Does that sound about right? Uh, yeah, somewhere in the ballpark. I just remember yeah. we were... Um, we were borrowing equipment from the company I worked for at the time before being laid off and we could only take it on the weekends. So I know that we could only shoot on the weekends. Um, so it took a long time. Yeah, and then we, again, we were like, dealing with people whose schedules were super busy. So working around their, like, like Harry and Shula's schedule, that, that also became a bit of an issue. And then was it run and gun kind of stuff shooting on the streets without licenses or, or was it all properly produced we got i think we got a couple permits for some scenes um and then other ones we didn't but i think that like ultimately like if we ever got in trouble or people were kind of like what's up like they would kind of just look at what we were doing and they were like you know what carry on like, yeah okay. i remember i was so yeah was, i guess sorry adam what were you saying no no i'm sorry to interrupt you matt i was just gonna say you know if he's a good actor so harry could just sort of go into cardiac uh, conveniently <laughs> So they, you know, so, oh, sorry, sorry, we'll leave you alone. Go ahead, continue, so, please. So not so off from that, but you know, Ellie and I co-directed this, but we also had like, by the nature of working with non-actors and people who are in their 80s and 90s in 90, like five degree heat, we also took on um, other roles of like popsicle bearers. And I, I was Harry's personal fanboy every weekend and had this squirt fan that he like insisted on being squirt, like in between takes being squirted in the face. Oh. That kind um, of fanboy. So okay. he need, yeah, a literal yeah. fanboy, a quite literal fanboy. Um, but I remember, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this, on the first day of shooting, we were shooting, I, I think we cut it from the film, but when Annie's waiting for, uh, for um, Alvy in front of the movie theater, we were, we were setting up the shot and this old couple walks by and I said, what are you guys shooting? 
And somebody says, oh, this Annie Hall senior remake. And the, and the woman lit up and she was like, oh, because we shot in a lot of the real locations. Right. And she lit up and she said, oh, my God, I was here for when they shot the original scene. Here. <laughs> That's great. It just felt like this really great kind of way to launch into the um, into the production. It's a, it's a movie that so belongs to New York City and to Jews and to, and just like romance. And it's one I find one of the most romantic movies made in New York. Yeah, me too. Well, Annie Hall is not a Jew. No, she's definitely not. not. But but the, the overall kind of vibe of the film is so inherently Jewish. Of course. No, yeah. I mean, that is, uh, I think Annie Hall is, is probably, you know, the most, I mean, in the last, let's say, 50 years. Are, are, are we past 50 years with that film yet? No, I guess it came out in 76 or 7, 77, right? Yeah. So we got a bit of a ways, but I mean, it's probably the the favorite uh, that everybody seems to agree on as the maybe right the template for a romantic comedy, mm -hmm. the urban romantic comedy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, guys, tell me, did you? So you want to do any hall? Do you go to approach Woody Allen? Do you do? Is there any kind of looking for permission or? There is definitely. I mean, listen, Woody Allen and his company, you know, they sue people. Right. Um, so we were definitely, when we landed on the film and the seniors chose it, there definitely was this, oh, like shit, like how are we gonna legally do this? And then we realized we weren't gonna legally do it and we should try to get permission. So he, I- Well, well I, no, our, our whole thing was get get uh, get forgiveness later. And that's kind of what oh, we yeah, I, went I, by. And, yeah. then, and then when we found out we were in the, you know, gonna be in the New York Times with this whole thing, we found out through the uh, reporter, the journalist at the Times that the publicist uh, through Woody Allen had okayed the project. That's what it and was. And that was really our only, our only kind of interaction. That was the only way that we had heard and, and found out. And you know what, and like good enough, his, like great. Yeah, he, 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 he gave his blessing and then he like commented, there was a New York Post article and he commented again. And so he kept kind of giving the, like, they can do whatever they want. Um, I don't know why they would want to work with older people, but they can do what they want. Um, so. No, if he's sold or not. Yeah. No, we don't know. By the way. I don't even think he, I mean, I know he doesn't watch his film, so I don't know why he'd watch yeah. a senior remake of his film, so. By the way, just so you know, uh, but we'll get to Diane Keaton in a second, but by the way, um, just so you know, uh, the Kurosawa team is very litigious, so I think you made the right choice. Oh, in the okay, end. good. <laughs> you'd be still, you'd still be in court if you went with Rashomon. Oh, uh, okay. Diane you Keaton. made the right decision. Yeah. yeah. Did funny. Diane Keaton? Uh, did you ever hear no, anything about her since her. she's we never, the eponymous? I think somebody tried to connect us once, and we and it didn't work out. Um, I mean, it'd be great to like like show her the film and kind of tell her what it meant to the seniors to kind of like take on these characters um, because it did. Well, now she's their age. Right. Yeah, she's, she's getting there, yeah. Um, it's like 80, it's gotta be 80. Yeah, yeah, Close Harry 80. was 94, Shula uh, never told us her age, but we can estimate somewhere around there. It's such a lovely film, I loved it. I've watched it a few times and I've sent it to everyone I know. Oh, that's so sweet. I, I, should, I should say one more thing about Harry's experience. So Harry, you know, you see him on screen and he really kind of embodies this character. Harry had not seen Annie Hall until after wow. making it. And I said, like, Harry, how'd you do this? And he's like, well, I'm just like, you know, I'm a neurotic Jew. Like, it wasn't that hard for me to play. You're right. But Harry, before making the film, Harry came into class, super quiet, um, a bit meek. Um, really, you know, he definitely embodied um, kind of this older version of the Alvy Singer character. But we didn't know a lot about Harry. We just knew, you know, we loved the way he looked. He dressed, I mean, he was so, he carried himself well, but you know, he was hunched over a little bit. And um, we, we decided to take the chance and cast a 94 year old. And through the process, we also became super like entwined. Like we became super close with Harry and Shula. We were spending, you know, every kind of every few days we were going to Harry's apartment for red boxed wine hey, and dinner. Quick, the, day, the day we shot the lobster scene, Harry was like, can I take it home? And we were like, please. And then like he calls us two hours later and he's like, can you guys help me crack it open? So we go to Harry's house. Matt's a vegan. Matt's never touched a lobster, eaten one, whatever. He agrees to crack it open. He uh, strips down to his skivvies, gets a hammer and just has at it. And then we all had this lobster together. And it's like, on what planet would 
millennials be doing this with like senior citizens? Like there were so many just like amazing moments and we got so close with everybody, but I'll let you get back to the story, Matt, about how Harry- Yeah, but just really quickly, one thing that you, it became this kind of like four dimensional um, filmmaking experience where we became so embedded, like we weren't doing a documentary, but we were so embedded in their lives and them in ours. And we became so invested and we could see Harry, we heard from Harry's friends and the community members that they could, they could see him physically transform, that Harry came into class for the first few weeks kind of hunched over, but by the end on stage, he was sitting up straighter, he was walking straighter into the cafeteria, but on stage he even said, and this guy has won two Emmys, he babysat for Frank and Nancy Sinatra Jr. in Jersey City. Like this guy, he designed, he designed the, uh, the Swiss Alps on the original 1968 uh, world, um, the It's a Small World ride in the World's Fair, really colorful life. But on stage at the premiere, he said that this was the greatest experience of his life. Oh, and it was this kind of amazing moment for us because again, we were just so in it. We were just trying to make art. We didn't know how transformative it was gonna be for them, but also for us. And it's kind of been this driving force throughout our work to this day. And you got a lot of press around this film, right? You got a lot of press, yeah. We've yeah. come to you two years late, but uh, I mean, it really was popular. It was well loved in New York, this theme and this idea. Well, yeah, it, people, it resonated with people. I think, you know, people love Annie Hall. Um, people in theory love older people, even though I th America clearly does not know what to do with older people and has a real problem with older people. But I think this story of artists remaking a film and and it not being this kind of infantilizing venture that it was this like very serious thing and then also the stories that came from that they could see the closeness between us and the cast yeah no i think the respect you gave those you know your, your actors and those people are, is amazing and that comes across too That's, we Good. appreciate that that was a really big thing for us i mean at the time when we were making this film this you know you remember kind of like what was happening on social media it was a lot of kind of like clickbaity videos like oh look at this cute grandma doing this sweet thing and that was really kind of like the predominant narrative on the internet at the time and i think it's kind of well, like petered out a little bit but um you know we yeah. really didn't want it to be this like overly infantilized like we wanted to no. have our actors be treated with respect and the dignity that they deserve and i'm, I'm glad to hear i think you're right i think that there's uh you know entertainment world is has historically treated seniors at least in the last 30, 40 years, like children, they're always used for a punchline. Mm -hmm. They're really uh, treated like, you know, they're all silly, clownish, you know, and uh, maybe, you know, in a way, Golden Girls <laughs> probably helped change some of that. Right. Totally. I don't know. And and your film contributed too in your own in your yeah, way. I didn't even shy away from the sex scene where Alvy's kind of hitting on her and she's reading in bed and going... Oh. One of our only complaints from the cast was that there wasn't enough sex. <laughs> so, you know, that was teaching, that was a teaching moment for Ellie and I. Like, we didn't shy away from it, but like, we sure didn't go out of our way to add a ton of it. Because again, we didn't want their age to be a punchline. Right. And only until after we learned like, oh, they wanted, they wanted more. They wanted to, they wanted to speak about sex. They wanted moments of intimacy. And Shula's actually singing in the film. That's her singing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got the rights for that song easily enough. That was yeah. You don't have to when you have a short film. It's not going to be oh, really? as much of an issue. Yeah, I, I think because you you're not charging people for it. No, we no, nobody made money off this. Um, I mean, this was like the larger narrative of what we did was the unintentional goal and kind of the takeaway when you watch this film and you see the seniors kind of rise to the occasion um, that you know, thank God nobody has come after us for anything. But uh, yeah, I think people see, I, they see the intention and what we were trying to do. Yeah. Wow. That's right. Right. You do it all over. Well, again, it's called My Annie Hall. And how do people see it? So it is, it is online now. We, we, we hesitated for a while because again, we were unsure of what legally we could do but then we we heard that it was okay to put online so it is, there it is on youtube um it's you know if you just google my annie hall it's it's pretty it's pretty easy to find Come up. <laughs> and then what what's next for you guys what are you gonna do 
You were making a night on a movie, or I know you've just done something together, right? Just, yeah, we yeah. just did another short with um, Ellie's in it and Kelly Bishop from Emily Gilmore from um, what's it called, Gilmore Girls, and that was really fun. So yeah, Ellie and I, you know, we've been writing a ton during um, during lockdown. We wrote a feature, and we're developing a show. Um, and yeah, I mean, we, there's a lot happening. This is like, you know, it opened up the opportunity to make this film has opened up a lot of other kind of great opportunities. Great. I'm glad. You're yeah. Yeah. One day, maybe you'll even be able to shoot something. Yes, that would be great. Okay. <laughs> I mean, in a, in a conventional way. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, did you guys do a uh, last thing? Did you guys do a, a a screening at the Strand? Is it, weren't we? Was that around the time you first contacted me? Yeah. What was that about? Strand. Because it's not typically a screening venue. No, we um, we yeah, we got invited to. You know, it's just such. A, it's a two New York institutions. Like the film we made, and just like just like the characters we used, all the seniors. It was just such. And, and Annie Hall, it's such a New York film. And I had a friend at the Strand, and I like pitched the idea, and she's like, "Yeah, this sounds great." And it kind of was our like faux premiere. We just thought it was a, an appropriate place to kind of celebrate the film and our care uh, and our cast. Loved it. Thank you so much. I yeah, mean, thanks for talking to us. It's really so fun. I, and it's so nice that um, Adams, I used to be on radio for Adam and now I'm on camera for Adam. So it's a whole. You know, <laughs> thanks, Adam, for that. Oh, oh yeah well anytime stay on by the way ron i, I just want to oh you want to yeah we'll, we'll do a p post kind of wrap up and where we'll you know i don't know we'll, we'll we'll figure it out but uh guys it was really nice to meet you yeah finally. thank you um, thank you so much glad. for having us yes oh pleasure it was a pleasure it was such a lucky accident that i met matt in a bookshop in new york oh is that oh is that how it happened yeah in the lower east side so it's perfect it's a nice whole jew thing <laughs> yeah, my friend, the same friend just opened up a bookshop and I volunteer on Saturdays and Ronald comes in with this gorgeous dog and we just get to talking and you should plug that bookshop because that bookshop's really, really great. Sweet Pickle Books, 47 Orchard, um, all secondhand. They sell pickles too. It's a great, it's a really great spot. Adam, so wow. No wonder Ron was in that store. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pickles and books. It's my thing. <laughs> Anyway, guys, let's stay in touch, though, please, because, uh, you know, we'll do this again. I'm, I'd love to. Cool. Yeah, definitely. Thank you again for having us. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 Take it easy. Next, Ron, what are we doing next? Well, you know, I whatever you feel uh, you'd like me to cover, I'll go and I'll go out there for film wax and I'll go for, I'll, do, I'll do interviews. I'll do book, TV. And so, it's... Well, you know, I'm doing all my festivals virtually. I'm right now. I'm I'm actually the the Lincoln Center and MoMA are uh, about to have their new director's new film festival, which I guess they start got a false start early in the spring and then had to shut it down. They were just getting it started when the pandemic, when the lockdown started, so they canceled the festival, and then they're doing it now. So uh, or about to on the ninth. So I've been watching some of those films at home, which has been nice because normally, Ron, know. you know, when we go to South by Southwest or if we go to one of those festivals, we get to see a lot of the films. But typically when you're home, you don't. Like in New York festivals, I have the hardest time because I'm working and I have all sorts of uh, obligations. But with this now I can watch, you know, I can stream them whenever I want to. The thing with so me, a lot different. I thought I'd be watching more movies than I am, but I'm so caught up in politics and COVID. Oh yeah, well, for sure. Most of my time and I can't wait to just unplug all of that. Yeah, no, no, I'm looking forward to a boring, yeah. uneventful existence for sure, right? Politics as usual. Yeah, I can't wait, I can't wait. It's good seeing you, well, it's thank, been, you. thank you for doing this. Well, it was, nice to, it was nice to do this, even though it was very different for what we've been doing, but it's, We'll definitely do it again. We'll find the right, the next right project, or rather, yeah, the nice next right project, meaning film or something, and we'll br we'll bring somebody on. God bless. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>